Computer networking is the practices and standards of connecting computers together in a network. Understanding computer networking is a good building block if you're trying to get into hacking or security or even systems administration. And in this video, we're going to go through all of the fundamentals of computer networking. I'm going to show you some of the utilities and programs that you can use to get a better understanding of a network. And we might even show you how to make your own Ethernet cable or terminate Ethernet cable. So stick around. Hello, hello, and welcome, beautiful and amazing people, to DS Tech Media. I am Jay, and today we are talking about computer networking, as I mentioned. And we're going to go through some of the fundamentals. I actually studied computer networking a long time ago in the Cisco program. Cisco is the leader in computer networking software and hardware. And hardware is a key aspect of networking. Most importantly, the uh, fundamental piece of computer networking is most likely your router. Now, uh, you probably have a router, something like this, in your home network. And this is basically like the network server. It handles the workload of connecting all of the computers together. And modern routers even connect all of your phones and other devices to your network. Routers operate in what is called layer three, the network layer. Other important devices are the uh, network interface card, which is usually built into your computer's motherboard. But there was a time when it had its own dedicated PCI Express card, like a graphics card. This is a wireless network card. This one is made by uh, Qualcomm. It's uh, Ethereos. It is actually from a laptop. It's a tiny little PCI peripheral and this one actually includes uh, Bluetooth and this device here is called a switch and a switch actually allows you to connect multiple Ethernet devices together this one's made by Linksys the SE 1500 and allows you to connect uh, multiple Ethernet devices together a uh, switch is a little different from a router. It operates at uh, the data link layer of the OSI model. It actually operates with Mac or media access controls via the lookup table rather than IP addresses in the routing table. So in a typical network situation, the router is the center point for your local area network. The router acts as your default gateway to the internet as well. The entire networking scheme is made up of something called the TCP IP protocol, which is the transmission control protocol slash internet protocol. And IP addresses are a string of numbers separated by uh, periods such as 192.168.1.255 and often they have something hidden behind them and this is known as a port. Various ports do different things so port 80 corresponds to HTTP servers which is the hypertext transfer protocol so when your computer tries to access something that way the network on the other end knows you're looking for a web page it could also be the port number 443 which means it's the secure sockets layer and that would be rather than an HTTP address that would be an HTTPS address meaning that it's using the secure sockets layer security protocol on top of HTTP. 
port 22 is for SSH or the secure shell, which is how we usually log into a Linux server from another Linux or Unix device with a terminal. And another thing that you can configure in your router is something called port forwarding. And in port forwarding, you're simply telling your router that when a connection comes in at this address, you want it to be forwarded from the outside internet to a specific local IP address and usually also with a specific port. But if we are accessing one of them from the outside, you're going to need your public IP address. And you can even have your router pay attention to the port being used from the remote address that's coming into your router that can be configured to then go to a specific computer at yet another port. And this can be useful for all sorts of things. In general, a lot of ports on home routers are closed for security purposes. So let's say we wanted to find out our computer's local IP address. On Linux or Unix, you can use the ifconfig command, that stands for interface configuration. And on mine, there's a ton of different uh, network adapters here. Most of these are virtual, but the important one is my ethernet address, which is right here. And my local IP address is 192.168.1.171. Typically your local address is gonna be the same, but with a variation of this last three digit number here. So if you're on uh, Windows, you can find your local IP IP address via the uh, command line. So open the command prompt and in this case we're going to use IP config. This is the address for my Windows system and you will notice there is a 2 here instead of a 1 and that's because this is actually a virtual machine so it's assigning that 2 to establish it on a sort of subnetwork. Now if you wanted to find your public IP address we can do that on Windows or Linux with the following command so curl or curl and the web address is ifconfig.me and so this is going to be your public address the address that leads to your router Speaking of your router, and I should mention that you can access your router's web interface by its local address, which is usually 192.168.1.1. If you log into your router and want to forward a port, you just look for the port forwarding section, and here you can set up port forwarding, specifying the local address you want to forward to, the source ports, the destination ports, and of course the port that you're trying to forward to. You can even give it a schedule and this can be useful especially if you're hosting your own website or any type of local server on your network. Speaking of which, Another useful command in Linux for networking work is the netstat command. And this will essentially show you all of the hundreds of connections, TCP IP ports, and unit sockets on your system. Another command line tool is the whois command. So you can type any internet address such as youtube.com, and you'll get the registrar information for this website. Now I did youtube.com, which is clearly a huge site, but this can be useful if you're trying to find out more information about a particular website online. It gives you the IANA ID, which IANA is what manages all of the internet topology. You can see the creation date for the website, and we can see uh, the admin organization, 
nation, state and province, country, and various other information about any domain online. Another useful command for monitoring data that is going across your computer or out of your computer is TCP track. So you need to run this as an administrator. So sudo TCP track. And then you'll also be needing to specify the interspace. So in my case, it's Ethernet P0S25. On yours, it might be something like ETH0. So sudo TCP track hyphen I for the interface. And then R for refresh. And let's give it a quick refresh. So like three, I think. And this is showing me all of the traffic currently going across in or out of my computer. You can pause it or unpause it. And with this, we can see what ports are being used and also the addresses that they're going out to and what ports are being used on those addresses. And this can be a way of finding if there's anything suspicious running in the background or if you just want to know what's running on your computer talking to things across the internet which can be pretty important depending on who you are and with that IP address you can usually figure out where that is what website that is via a Google search so another application that I really like is called nutty n-u-t-t-y And with Nutty, we can get lots of information about uh, the computer we're running. We can look at what apps are using our internet connection currently and how much they're sending and receiving. So we got Nextcloud, Brave, Dropbox, and we can do a speed test. And all of the Netstat data is also listed in here. But what I really like using it for is looking at the uh, network topology. So we can see every computer on the network. It shows us which ones are currently running and the ones that aren't on when they were last seen, when they joined the network. You could find somebody who is perhaps stealing your Wi-Fi this way. And Nutty is just a great tool in general for basic information. Now, a tool that is more commonly used by professionals would be Nmap or even Zenmap. And ZenMap is just one version of a graphical interface for NMAP. This is my preferred way of doing it, NMAP SI4. It's a QT5 based GUI. And we can take one of the local IP address or IP address in general. And we can scan the address for various pieces of information about it. And if we click on it, we can see that the host we scan has a little penguin icon because it is a Linux host. We can see all of the open ports on the host and even what service they correspond to. This can be a way of determining attack vectors if you're trying to do penetration testing. If it was a remote host, uh, we'd be able to see the trace route, the lookup, and it'll even populate this security network vulnerabilities lookup with the services that we saw. And we can even run a search to determine vulnerabilities associated with those open ports and those services. So it's pretty useful in that way. And another program that's used for uh, network visualization is Etherate. And once it's running, you have to go to your interface here and specify which interface to use, but it'll actually trace all of your internet traffic out to various IP addresses and websites. And it'll even show you a connecting graph of those sites so you can better understand how those sites are sharing your data in some cases. And you can see what protocol it's going out on. So the uh, if you click nodes, it'll even bring up this list that shows you everything that it's found so far. So basically, just another way of getting the same thing done. Another tool that is very 
commonly used in the hacking or penetration testing world is Wireshark Network Analyzer. And in order to get into this program, I'd probably want to do a dedicated video, but I figured I should at least open it up and mention it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to make Cat5 Ethernet cable, or terminate it rather. So you're going to need some raw cat5 cable this is cat5e this is riser cable it's the cheaper of the versions the other kind that you'll see is probably called i think it's called plenum and it's for if you're running your cable through ductwork, which we are not so this is usually going to be cheaper this is usually going to be what you want and this is a hundred foot of it and the other thing that you're going to need is um a tool. This is uh, by Klein Tools. If you're an electrician or no electrician, they will know the brand Klein. And this is a crimper, cutter, and stripper. And it works for Cat5 in Ethernet or Cat6 Ethernet. And also has phone jack crimper. On the other side, it has uh, another smaller uh, connection. 4P crimper. We got some other tools here. Um, this is a punch down tool. This is for doing a uh, box ethernet wiring. And this is a stripper plunger. It's for uh, stripping and slitting cable. You don't really even need one of these. The only thing you really need is this. And of course, we're gonna need some RJ45 uh, connectors. Just doing a little bridge connection for my switch. I'm only gonna need about probably about like that. It should be that should be plenty. And when I made that cut, not only did it sever it, but it also started stripping it for me. And there we go, got the twisted pairs exposed. All right, now we have both sides. So the pattern we're gonna be doing is the T568B pattern. This is pretty standard. And it's gonna be the striped orange the solid orange, the twisted green, the solid blue, then the twisted blue, the solid green, the twisted orange, or I'm sorry, brown, and the solid brown. And we have to make a flat pattern like that. And that's gonna go into, we're gonna insert those into the RJ45 connector. Once we got them all lined up, we just gotta crimp them. Now we got a good solid crimp and we're ready to rock and roll. We just got to do the other side and we have an ethernet cable. All right, so there you have it, folks. There was a crash course on computer networking and some of its tools. Not comprehensive, but just enough to get you started, get you curious. What did you think? Let me know in the comments section below. If you want to know more, let me know because I could always do a follow up. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, if you loved it, subscribe. And you can find me on YouTube, Library and Odyssey, BitChute, DTube. And I post blog articles on the Hive and Steemit blockchains. You can also find me on Mines, Instagram, etc. and so forth. All of the links are in the description below, or at least they should be. would love to hear from you. Let me know what you thought. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.